Good evening, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be learning about reflection. Okay, first we'll learn about the uh, nature of light that allows us to draw it as rays, and then we will be looking uh, specifically at reflection. So speaking of reflection, why don't you say hello to the camera? Hi, it's nice to be here today. I'm Beard Man's Reflection. So, first thing that we need to talk about is uh, how can we draw light in a way to understand uh, things like reflection? Well, first of all, it's important to notice that light travels in a straight line. Okay, so well, how do we know that light travels in a straight line? Well, if you've ever played paintball or, or something like that, or, or ever been trying to hide from somebody and yet see them, you know that you have to look and your the light is coming in a straight line. So if you can see them, they can see you. That means the light coming from them is traveling in a straight line. Straight from them to you and you can see them. Okay. Um, you could also look at shadows if you have a light and you have something that it's shining on. Okay. Uh, then you know that that light doesn't bend around the corner, it travels in a straight line. Okay? So the way we often represent this is with something called a ray diagram. Okay? And a ray diagram might look like this, just for light going away from a source. Or it could uh, look like this if we have a complex set of mirrors and lenses. But uh, the basic idea is that we can draw light as a straight line. Okay? So, if we have a mirror, like we saw here, where we have my reflection, say hello again. Hi there, it's uh, good to see you. Um, then we can figure out how that's happening by drawing light as a straight line, okay? So in order to see my reflection over here, okay, right there, right? Um, we have to say, hey, what's happening to light? Well, the camera that's filming this, the light that uh, is coming off of me, um, Let's just talk about the light coming off my nose. Get my reflection of the nose there. So the light coming off of me is going straight towards the camera. Okay? Um, and uh, so that's one ray diagram we could draw. It's just a, a line with an arrow straight from my nose to the camera. And that's why you see my nose right here is because the light is going that direction. And so you see it as coming from this direction. Okay? Another way that light could get to the camera is to come over here, bounce off the mirror here, so it's going from me towards the mirror, and then from the mirror, and then from the mirror, it's going to go straight to the camera. Okay? So it goes straight to the mirror, it bounces off, and goes straight to the camera. And we could draw that as a ray diagram, something like this. Okay, now, as that happens, first of all, no mirror is perfect, okay? And so, as that happens, some of the light will be absorbed, usually at least 20, at least 10%, sometimes more, but the other 80 or 90% will bounce off as we, uh, as we indicate in the ray diagram. Okay, now you might be saying, well, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense, okay, so this is bouncing off of here, um, and so, uh, when the camera sees that light, your eyes don't interpret the bounce. Okay, your eyes don't, like, automatically process that it had bounced from over here off the mirror. Okay, your eyes just see light coming from here, and your eyes can interpret that that means it came from over here. Okay, and so your brain interprets that my nose is over here because that's where the light came from. It also came from here, so you see it here. You see it both places. Okay, you see a reflection. We would call this thing in the mirror here an image. Okay, so you get the light directly from the object in this case, but you also get the light from the image. Okay, and anyone uh, standing anywhere in the room here, whether we, wherever we move the camera, okay, wherever we move the camera, that image is in the same place, okay? Somewhere behind the mirror, okay? And uh, uh, you could do a lab, like we did in class yesterday, that uh, uh, 
draws the ray diagrams and figures out where that is. And that could look something like this. You see the light uh, coming off my nose, bouncing off the mirror in different places. It bounces off in different directions. And so no matter where you are, you're looking at, at that image. At me. Hello. 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 At me. Yeah, me. So um, anyways, uh, there you go. Okay, so now as that happens, as the light uh, bounces off um, uh, toward, uh, bounces off the mirror, the light that comes in we'll call the incident ray. It's coming in, it's incident. And the, the ray that comes out we'll call the reflected ray. Okay? Now, <clears throat> we measure the angle of the incident ray compared to the normal. Okay, normal means perpendicular, like we learned with friction. Uh, draw a line perpendicular to the surface, as you see in the diagram here. We call that the normal. And the angle is measured from the normal to the incident ray. Okay, so that, that, that angle in between it that you see up here labeled theta i. Okay, and that's the incident, uh, incident angle. Then the reflected angle is the angle it comes out at, that it comes out towards you, or after it bounces off the mirror, and that would be the angle between the incident, uh, between the normal and the reflected ray. Okay? Now, for uh, reflection, those two angles will be equal. Okay? The angle that it comes in at will equal the angle it comes out at every time. Okay? And so that's why we can figure out exactly where this image would be, and the image, hello, uh, uh, it stays in the same place. Okay, it doesn't shift around because those two angles are always equal. Now keep in mind this this uh, knowledge that the incident ray equals the reflected ray can really help you when you're playing pool. Okay, because as you angle a bank shot off the bumper, assuming the bumper's uh, flat and not bumpy, or you know. Um, then the angle that it goes in it will be the same as the angle it comes out with, okay? At least assuming you're not dealing with spin of the ball and other frictional forces, okay? But for the most part, the angle it goes in will be the same as the angle it comes out. And so that can help you in your billiards. Um, so it bounces off uh, like that. Now, you might be saying, well, it doesn't seem like light always bounces off like that. Okay, well, let's take my nice brightly colored shirt here. Okay, first of all, my shirt isn't glowing. Okay, so it's not producing its own light. There's light up here from, from the ceiling. Here. There you go, where is it? There you go, there's the light up in the ceiling. Okay, so we got the light up in the ceiling there, and that light, and uh, that light comes down and it bounces off my shirt. Well, if it all came down and hit my shirt and went off, angle of incidence, angle of reflection, then it would all end up on the floor and you wouldn't be able to see me. Because the only reason you can see me in my wonderfully colored shirt is that the light reflects off it. Remember, like we said, the yellow part here, uh, pretend that's yellow, it's kind of gold, but we'll pretend, suspend your disbelief. Um, that, that yellow part there, the blue light is being absorbed. That means the red and the green portions of the spectrum are reflecting to your eye, and so you uh, perceive that as yellow, like we learned in the color video. Um, but it's bouncing off, it's reflecting, okay? But you can see, even though the lights are up there, you can see this no matter where you are in the room, okay? You can look around the room you're in right now. You can see everything in the room. Light is bouncing off and getting to your eye. And often in most rooms, there's just like one light or two lights. Okay, and so if there was just one light, you would expect only people down here to be able to see the light coming off that. Well, here's what happens. My shirt is not flat. <gasps> okay, so what does that mean? It means there's a bunch of threads and the molecules make a whole bunch of bumps in my shirt. So the surface might look more like you see in this picture here. And so as the light comes in, you can see in the picture, it's not hitting a flat surface, and so the normal isn't what we might have expected it to be. The normal for each photon is a little bit different, okay, because it's bumpy. So 
one ray comes in like this and it goes off in this direction. The next ray comes off it and it goes in this direction. The next one it's angled like this and it comes off in this direction. And so three-dimensionally it's scattering in all kinds of di directions because the surface is not perfectly smooth. Okay, And so um, uh, it scatters in all directions. Every single photon is obeying the law of reflection. Uh, by the way, the, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection is called the law of reflection. Um, and so, and so every single photon is obeying the law of reflection, that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, but the normal angle is different for every little microscopic distance along my shirt. And so each little microscopic distance is shooting out in different directions, and you get to see my wonderfully colored shirt. This is called diffuse reflection. Diffuse reflection. Sorry, not diffuse. Diffuse reflection. Um, diffuse reflection is when uh, the light hits an uneven surface and ends up scattering in all directions. When we have a situation more like a mirror where pretty much it's completely flat and so pretty much all the light goes in this way goes out over here, okay? If we had a flashlight here, that light would bounce off just like that. It would not hit and scatter to all parts of the room. It would just bounce off and hit over in that direction. That type of uh, reflection has, has two names. Some people call it regular reflection because it's all going the, the same direction. Others call it specular. Okay, so specular uh, reflection. When all the light goes the same way, there's no little microscopic inconformities that cause uh, different uh, normals, different surfaces that make it bounce off in different directions. So that's called specular reflection. Thank you for joining us here on Scientific Adventures in Beard Man. Go have a conversation with your ref reflection. Don't let, them, uh, don't let them waste their time just being behind a mirror, stuck as an image. Take your object. By the way, you're the object. Go have a conversation. That's a little weird. But enjoy uh, your knowledge of reflection, both diffuse and specular. Have a great day.